Events at the ISS in 2019 began on January 13th, when the CRS-16 cargo vehicle was unberthed from the Navy Report on Harmony and released. It deorbited, splashing down in the Pacific Ocean approximately five hours after undocking, returning more than 2,500 kilograms of cargo back to Earth. On January 25, 2019, Progress MS-09 undocked from the Pierce module, conducted its deorbit burn, and burnt up in the atmosphere over the Pacific Ocean. On March 2, 2019, SpaceX launched the first unoccupied Crew Dragon spacecraft atop a Falcon 9 booster from Launch Pad 39C at the Kennedy Space Center for the Crew Dragon Demo-1 mission. After the main engine cutoff, or MECO, the first stage of the Falcon 9 landed back at the drone ship Of Course I Still Love You. The Crew Dragon spent just over 24 hours in a rendezvous orbit. The mission tested all critical flight milestones, including approach and docking with the International Docking Adapter on PMA-2 at the forward end of the Harmony module. It was the first spacecraft to dock to that port since the last shuttle mission in 2011. On behalf of Ripley, Little Earth, myself and our crew, welcome to the Crew Dragon. Congratulations to all of the teams who made yesterday's launch and today's docking a success. These amazing feats show us not how easy our mission is, but how capable we are of doing hard things. Welcome to the new era in spaceflight. The Crew Dragon stayed docked for just five days. It then undocked and returned safely to Earth and it was picked up by a recovery ship in the Gulf of Mexico. Two weeks later, on March 14, 2019, Roscosmos launched Soyuz MS-12 atop a Soyuz FG carrier rocket from Site-15 at the Baikonur Cosmodrome on a fast track to the ISS. And liftoff. We have liftoff of Nick Hay, Christina Cook, and Alexei Ovchinin, now on their way to the International Space Station. Good first stage performance so far. The Soyuz is delivering 930,000 pounds of thrust from its four boosters and single engine. Less than six hours later, Soyuz MS-12 docked to the Rossviet module without issues. On April 4th, 2019, Progress MS-11, or 72P, launched from Site-315 atop a Soyuz 2.1 carrier rocket from the Baikonur Cosmodrome on a fast track to the ISS. And liftoff. Liftoff of the 72nd Progress Resupply Vehicle. Destination station, two orbits from now. 
pitch roll and your program are in. Just three hours and 21 minutes after launch, Progress MS-11 arrived at the station and docked to the Pierce module in record time. On April 17, 2019, Orbital ATK launched a Cygnus spacecraft named the SS Roger Chaffee atop an Antares 230 carrier rocket from Wallops Island in Virginia. And we have liftoff of the Antares NG-11 mission to the ISS. Engines at full power. Attitude is nominal. Core pressurization looks good. Power systems look good. Stable operation, full power, both engines. Core pressures look solid. Attitude is nominal. After the standard two-day rendezvous orbit, the SS Roger Chaffee arrived at the station, was grabbed by the Canada Arm, and berthed to the Nadir port of Unity. Nine. On May 4, 2019, SpaceX launched a Dragon cargo vehicle atop a Falcon 9 from Launch Pad 40 at the Kennedy Space Center for the CRS-17 mission. And liftoff of the Falcon 9 rocket and Dragon spacecraft carrying research seeking to improve human health on Earth and in space. After main engine cutoff, or MECO, the first stage landed on the drone ship Of Course I Still Love You, stationed just 28 miles off the coast of Florida. Stage one, landing burn has started. Stage two has entered terminal guidance. Landing legs have deployed. State. Uh, of course, I still love you. Falcon 9 has landed. Landing operators move into procedure 11.1. After the standard two day rendezvous orbit, the Dragon was captured by the Canada Arm and berthed to the Nadir port on Harmony. The Dragon stayed for about a month when, on June 3rd, it was unberthed, released from the ISS, and deorbited, splashing down in the Pacific Ocean approximately five hours after undocking returning more than 2,500 kilograms of cargo and experiments back to Earth. On June 4, 2019, Progress MS-10 undocked from the aft end of the Svezda and, filled with the station's trash, deorbited and burnt up over the Pacific Ocean. On July 24, 2019, SpaceX launched a Dragon cargo vehicle for the third time atop a Falcon 9 from Launch Pad 40 at the Kennedy Space Center for the CRS-18 mission. Ignition. And liftoff of the Falcon 9 rocket and the Dragon spacecraft. On the heels of the 50th anniversary of Apollo 11's return from the moon, we send more science and supplies up to the International Space Station. Small flight operations. Stage one propulsion is nominal. After main engine cutoff, or MECO, the first stage landed back at landing zone one at the Kennedy Space Center. Eddie, can you hear the landing burn just started? There, you heard the call out. Watch those landing legs deploy coming up shortly. Stage two is entered terminal guidance. Landing legs deployed. There you can see those landing legs deployed. Yeah. 
And touchdown of the Falcon Nine in our landing zone one at Cape Canaveral. After the standard two-day rendezvous orbit, the Dragon was captured by the cannon arm and berthed to the station. On July 29, 2019, Progress MS-11 undocked from the Pierce module, conducted its deorbit burn, and burnt up in the atmosphere over the Pacific Ocean. Two days later, on July 31, 2019, Progress MS-12 launched atop a Soyuz 2.1 carrier rocket from Site 315 at the Baikonur Cosmodrome on a fast track to the ISS. Engine is and lift off. We have lift off of the Progress. Progress 73 on its way in the fast lane to the International Space Station. Another record breaking fast track to the station. Of just 3 hours, 18 minutes, 31 seconds, Progress MS 12 arrived at the station after just two orbits and docked to the Pierce module without issues. On August 6, 2019, the Cygnus SS Roger Chaffee was unberthed from the Nadir port of Unity and released. It stayed in orbit for three months before deorbiting on December 6. The CRS-18 Dragon stayed docked until August 27th, when it was unberthed from the Nadir port on Harmony and released. Afterwards, it performed its deorbit burn, splashing down in the Pacific Ocean approximately five hours later, returning more than 2,500 kilograms of cargo and experiments back to Earth. On August 22nd, 2019, Soyuz MS-14 launched atop a Soyuz 2.1A carrier rocket from Site-316 at the Baikonur Cosmodrome. Turbo pumps up to flight speed and liftoff. Liftoff of the unpiloted Soyuz MS-14 spacecraft on a test flight to pave the way for future crew launches to the International Space Station. There were no crew members aboard, as this was a test of the launch abort system on the 2.1A rocket and upgraded navigation and propulsion control systems. Heading for an orbit 51.6 degrees inclined to the International Space Station for a rendezvous and docking early Saturday morning. Following a flawless two-day-long free flight and rendezvous with the ISS, Soyuz MS-14 was scheduled to dock with the station's Poisk module on August 24th. During the final phases of the spacecraft's approach to the ISS, its KERS rendezvous system failed to lock onto the station, and it wasn't able to make a dock. While Progress crafts also have a TORU backup system, where cosmonauts can take manual control of the spacecraft from the ISS, Soyuz MS-14 was not so equipped. The fault was located on the Kerr signal amplifier on the Poisk, and initial plans called for the cosmonauts to replace the amplifier ahead of a new docking attempt. It was subsequently decided that on August 26, the crew of MS-13 would relocate their spacecraft from the aft port of the Svezda and perform a manual docking with the faulty Poisk port, freeing up the aft port on the Svezda for MS-14 using the Kerr system which was done on August 27th. After a week docked, Soyuz MS-14 undocked from the Svezda aft port, performed its deorbit burn, and returned safely to Earth on December 6, 2019. On September 24th, 2019, the Japanese resupply vehicle HTV-8 launched atop an H-2B rocket from the Tanegashima Space Center. The engine underneath now igniting. D-0 and liftoff of the HTV-8 and the H-2B rocket carrying its way four tons of cargo to the International Space Station. Lighting up the night sky over southern Japan. Everything looking good through the flight so far. After four days in orbit, HTV-8 approached the station, where it was grabbed by the Canada Arm and berthed to the Nadir Port of Harmony. The day after the HTV-8 launch, September 25, 2019, 
Roscosmos launched Soyuz MS-15 atop the final Soyuz FG carrier rocket from Site 15 at the Baikonur Cosmodrome on a fast track to the ISS. Engine turbo pumps at twice speed. Engines at maximum thrust. And lift off. Lift off. Oleg Skripochka, Jessica Mir, Haza, Ali, Alman, Suri leaping forth from Gagarin start on their way to the International Space Station. Is that the checkpoint? First and second stage in. Six hours later, Soyuz MS-15 docked to the aft port of the Svezda without issues. On October 3rd, 2019, Soyuz MS-12 undocked from the Rosviet with Expedition 59 crew members and UAE astronaut Haza Elman Surya aboard. It performed the deorbit burn and returned safely back to Earth uh, in just three hours. Space Station flew 260 miles over southeast Mongolia. On November 1, 2019, HTV-8 was unberthed from the Harmony module and released into orbit. After a series of trajectory control maneuvers, HTV-8 completed the final deorbit burn on November 3, 2019, and deorbited over the Pacific Ocean. On November 2nd, 2019, Orbital ATK launched a Cygnus Five, spacecraft four, named SS Allen three, Bean two, atop an Antares one. 230 carrier rocket from Wallops Island in Virginia. After the standard two-day rendezvous orbit, the SS Allen Bean arrived at the station, was grabbed by the cannon arm, and berthed to the Navy Report of Unity. On November 29, 2019, Progress MS-12 undocked from the Pierce module, conducted the deorbit burn, and burnt up in the atmosphere over the Pacific Ocean. On December 5th, 2019, SpaceX launched a Dragon cargo resupply vehicle atop a Falcon 9 from Launch Pad 40 at the Kennedy Space Center for the CRS-19 mission. Zero. Engines ignition. Liftoff of the Falcon 9 and Cargo Dragon, transporting critical research to enable living and working in Earth orbit and in deep space. After main engine cutoff, or MECO, the first stage landed on the drone ship Of Course I Still Love You, so stationed off the coast of Florida. Lost to the link of the footage. We're listening in to see if we can Stage one has landed. Recovery operator. And touchdown of Falcon 9 on our drone ship Of Course I Still Love You. You can certainly hear the excitement. After the standard two day rendezvous orbit, the Dragon was captured by the Canada Arm and berthed to the station. The day after the SpaceX CRS-19 launch, December 6, 2019, Progress MS-13, or 74P, launched atop a Soyuz 2.1A from Site 315 at the Baikonur Cosmodrome. And liftoff. Liftoff of the 74th Progress resupply vehicle now on its way to deliver 2.7 tons of cargo to the International Space Station. Everything reported nominal so far. To avoid docking with the ISS at the same time as the CRS-19 Dragon vehicle, Progress MS-13 followed a slow three-day rendezvous trajectory, rather than the fast track used on Progress MS-12. On December 9th, Progress MS-13 docked to the Pierce module. The last event of 2019 was the launch of Boeing's CST-100 Starliner. Developed as part of the commercial crew program at NASA, Starliner is a reusable crew capsule for ISS missions. 
The capsule has a diameter of 4.56 meters, which is slightly larger than the Apollo command module, but smaller than the Orion capsule. The Boeing Starliner holds a crew of up to seven people and is designed to be able to remain in orbit for up to seven months with reusability up to 10 missions. It's designed to be compatible with four different launch vehicles, the Atlas V, the Delta IV, the Falcon 9, and the Vulcan. On December 20th, 2019, the Boeing Starliner Orbital Test Flight launched atop an Atlas V from Launch Complex 41 at Cape Canaveral, Florida. Lift off. Release. Engine at full thrust. We've cleared the tower. Now 10 seconds into flight. Vehicles begun the pitch over program. Body rate responses look good. Now 15 seconds in. PU's gone to closed loop control. RD-180 looks good at full thrust, seeing good chamber pressure on both SRBs. During the test, the Starliner experienced a timing anomaly that precluded a docking with the International Space Station. I want to start by just making sure everybody knows that today, a lot of things went right. And this is, in fact, why we test. Um, so we did have, obviously, some challenges today. Uh, when, the, when the spacecraft separated from the launch vehicle, um, we did not get the orbital insertion burn that we were hoping for. It uh, appears as though the mission elapsed timing system um, had an error in it. Um, and that anomaly resulted in the vehicle believing that the time was different than it actually was. And because that timing was a little bit off, um, what ended up happening is uh, the, the, the spacecraft tried to maintain a very precise uh, control that it normally wouldn't have tried to maintain and it burned a lot of, a lot of prop in that, in that part of the, uh, the flight. And when that prop got burnt, uh, it looked like we weren't gonna be able to, to, to go ahead and, and rendezvous with the International Space Station. By the time we were able to get signals up uh, to, to actually command it to do the orbital insertion burn, it was a bit too late. And the reason it was too late is because it, it appears, and remember, all of this is very early and preliminary and we're learning things moment by moment, but it appears as though um, we were between uh, TDRS communication satellites, which meant we couldn't get uh, the command signal to, to, tell the to tell the spacecraft that it needed to do the orbital insertion burn soon enough. So two days after launch, on December 22nd, 2019, a successful landing at White Sands Missile Range in New Mexico made the Boeing Starliner Calypso the first ever crew-capable space capsule to make a land-based touchdown in the United States. In 2020, SpaceX would send its first crew to the station and return capability of sending astronauts to the ISS from American soil with American-made rockets. <laughs> <laughs>